you indulge her. Oh, please. I think you love it. Netflix has done it yet again by bringing a tiny show to the platform with a lot to tell apart from being dark and at times hilarious comedic. Even though we get to see a lot of shows surrounding comedians and their lives, Baby Reindeer explores many topics in its seven-episode run and delivers on its subject matter. This series isn't exactly like the comedy shows we have seen before, but we can guarantee some laughs and a dark story. However, unlike most of these cases, it seems that Baby Reindeer is based on the true story of Richard Gadd. Let's focus on Richard Gadd's character, Donnie Stalker in the series Martha, and discover what happened to her. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin! Who is a stalker and baby reindeer? Richard Gadd's story is one of the craziest ones we have encountered over the years, considering comedians tend to make something out of their shows. Larry David's Curb Your Enthusiasm is considered controversial because of the various situations that he puts himself in. But wait until you understand how disturbing Richard Gadd's experiences are, and it is hard to accept that actual events inspire most events. But Baby Reindeer also makes us ponder about another character who drives the series with her acts that unfold the character of Donnie Dunn, played by Richard Gadd himself. This character is none other than Martha Scott herself, the stalker who makes herself a part of Donnie's life whether he likes it or not. The bizarre turn of events starts from this one day, when Donnie is working at the bar, and a lady comes and sits in front of the counter. Sticking to his job, he asked her if she needed something, but he noticed she seemed emotionally disturbed. He gives her a cup of tea in the house, which will be the bullet from Gavrila Princip's gun and launch the world war of Donnie's life. His act of kindness struck a chord with Martha, so she would continuously appear in the bar for her usual drink in the house for the next few days. Initially. Donnie thought it was all friendly, until things started getting weird when she began making romantic moves by asking him out. Donnie didn't reject these moves for some reason, but accepted them occasionally, not knowing that he was feeding the wrong cat. Even though Donnie would joke about their relationship, she seemed to be taking it all seriously, and that's when Donnie realized that it had gotten weirder. This behavior would affect his life, and he promised her false hope during one of his gestures to make her feel good. But to his complete and utter shock, Martha was encouraged by this behavior and took things to another level. She appeared at one of his stand-up events and started to talk to him directly. She would be the first to giggle in a crowd of people who seemed hard to entertain. While the interaction between the two proved quite a joke, Donnie tried to clarify things with her, only to make things much worse. Agitated by Donnie's attempts at backing out of all of this, Martha attacks another one of his gigs where Donnie Donnie's ex, Terry, is present. Donnie had told Terry about all this, and she was intrigued to meet her, but Martha isn't one to see Donnie in a relationship, so she attacks Terry. Considering things had gone too far, Donnie decided to report to the police, opening a new can of worms from his past. The police don't take the case seriously, and Donnie doesn't mention anything apart from the hundred emails he receives daily. But Martha starts making intimate moves towards Donnie as she appears at Donnie's rather complicated housing situation. Donnie gets kicked out because of the safety breach and moves to his friend's place. Meanwhile, the entire episode brings Terry and Donnie closer as the duo gets back into the relationship, and it ends up being the only positive thing in his life for the time being. But Martha doesn't stop with her attacks, and this time, convinced by Terry, Donnie goes to the police with proper evidence. The police take action, and it seems that Donnie's nightmare has been over for a while since he didn't receive the creepy email, but this was only for a while, considering that Martha made the next move right toward Donnie's parents and Donnie moved back.
back with his family to sort things out. Looking at Martha's attack's impact on her parents, Donnie decided to end things once and for all and go straight to Martha. But Martha was a pro at work and sent the authorities recordings of her interactions with him over the past few months. This evidence puts Donnie as the offender considering all the times he entertained Martha's behavior. Finally, when Martha tries to harass Donnie at his work verbally, Donnie exposes her stalking history to the people. Martha goes out of control, lashes out, and hits Donnie on the face with the glass. Donnie goes on with his day and heads for his stand-up gig in front of a large crowd. But this is when he realizes what Martha means to Donnie and how he also needs her as much as she is held responsible for stalking him. He has had a breakdown on stage and tells all about this tragic past and the recent events associated with Martha. The breakdown reaches a massive audience and people start talking to him about it, which gets him more attention than he ever thought he would get. But Martha didn't find the way she spoke about Donnie being excellent at all and she blackmailed him so that she would tell his parents about his trauma. Before she could reach out to them, Donnie heads back to his parents, tell them about his recent popularity and everything associated with it. Surprisingly, even after all the details he shares, even his father, who has to be the funniest character in the series, accepts him. Since the attacks were now aimed at his parents, Donnie started collecting all the voicemails that he received from Martha to share them with the authorities. Instead, Donnie started going through them to gain a whole new perspective on Martha until the very day that she was presented in court to be put away for her recent stalking allegation. In a world where Donnie feared nobody would understand him for who he was, Donnie felt glad that Martha's voice notes were with him when nobody saw him. The most compelling aspect of the series is the performances by every actor, particularly the performances of Richard Gadd as Donnie and Jessica Gunning as Martha. Gunning brings the perfect person for the character, which confuses us regarding her next move. At the same time, Richard Gadd, telling his own story, goes knee-deep into his events and brings them to life in the series. I'm really worried here. What happened to Martha? Where is she now? Martha is responsible for the title of the series Baby Reindeer, which is how she used to address Donnie. And it has something to do with a stuffed toy from her childhood. Even though she kept mentioning that she was a high-profile lawyer, it all turned out to be a hoax. Considering she had gone through a lot of cases of stalking and even served her time in prison for the same. However, not much is known regarding the honest Martha, except that she she was about 20 years older than him. Richard Gadd felt it was essential to keep the real stalker away from the series, considering that he didn't want her affected by it. According to Gadd, he had received 41,071 emails and 350 hours of voicemails from the honest Martha. She didn't leave him from the social media platforms either and sent him 744 tweets and 46 Facebook messages. Even though most of this is talked about in the series, viewers would be shocked to know that she even sent him 106 pages of letters along with bizarre gifts like sleeping pills, boxer shorts, and yes, a reindeer toy. In the series, Martha pleads guilty to charges against her and receives a 9-month prison sentence and a 5-year restraining order. But this might not be the case with the honest Martha, considering Gad has talked about how he didn't get her sent to prison because he felt that he didn't want someone with her level of mental illness to end up in jail. Upon being asked about his interaction with the stalker, Gad said he had mixed feelings about the situation, but it has been somewhat resolved. During the success of his show Monkey See Monkey Do, which was based on his sexual assault, Gad's stalkers started to call his parents. Since Gad wasn't very open with his parents about these particular life events, it worried him. In the series, when Martha threatened him with telling his parents about the revelation he had on stage, he rushes back to them to tell them his side of things. Martha's character underwent many changes to make it completely different from Gad's real stalker. Gad ensured it was so distinct that even the stalker wouldn't identify her portrayal in the Netflix series. The only thing common between the two is the emotional aspect of the character. Look Martha, just go back home. I have a sneaky feeling you might be the death of me.
Is she a villain in the story or not? Difference between real life story and the series. The one question that would grow in the mind of the viewer after watching the series is associated with Martha. Is she the villain or is a villain a word too harsh to describe the person of a character like Martha? Baby Reindeer is a story told in the boldest possible way and upon proper viewing, it brings us to a more extensive discussion instead of pointing fingers at individuals. Even though Martha was would be considered crazy and what she did was most definitely harassment to the peak it doesn't mean that she was the villain martha brings some exciting developments into donnie's life in the larger scheme richard gadd revealed that the breakdown shown in the penultimate episode of the series didn't happen in reality but it must have come to him as a particular realization as a performer gadd needed attention and at a time when nobody cared for him martha struck out of the crowd and praised his attempts. This reaction would be why Gad made his mistakes and encouraged his stalker's behavior towards him. Even though the primary focus of the series was what Gad experienced, there were a lot of elements of his long-time suffering depicted in the series in the form of past trauma and how it impacted his work. Over the years, Gad has stated that somehow this abuse kept getting in the way of his work and he realized he needed to merge the two and create a one-person show that Netflix helped him develop in the series. If Martha had been the villain, then there wouldn't have been any originality to the series considering we hear cases of stalkers all the time. The fact that Gad enjoyed her presence in a way he never wanted to accept makes it much more original. Gad's sexual assault had a massive role to play in somewhat conditioning him to the idea of pleasing people for the sake of not coming out of closed boxes. But that breakdown scene in the series allowed allowed him to open up about what had happened and face the reality of his circumstances. Once he accepted that, realizing why he had been encouraging the stalker's behavior became apparent. Even his girlfriend Terry, played by Navamao, stated at one point that he was the villain in the situation and enjoyed the stalker's presence. Donnie wouldn't accept this right away, but Terry was a therapist and we can understand that she had some truth, which is what Donnie would realize over time. It is as if Donnie and Martha fit each other like some messed up pieces of puzzle, which is why Donnie embraces the events of his interactions around the end when he is seen listening to Martha's voicemails. Many things come to mind when trying to understand Martha's character. But one must remember that Gad dealt with the situation differently. Martha was suffering from an illness that made her do what she did and the series brings that to the forefront. In reality, Gad hasn't put her in prison by pressing charges against her because he realized that doing so wouldn't be a step towards curing what had happened to her. There was a conscious effort from Gad and his time to make sure that Martha wasn't seen entirely as a monster. Instead, he focused on the fact that she was unwell and that the system had somehow failed to help her. Before Baby Reindeer, many shows and movies depicted the concept of a stalker, but they always brought them into the wrong light and made them the antagonists. But Gad wanted to tell people she was also a victim of these ordeal. These people aren't absolute strangers, but someone who has had some form of prior interaction with their target. Another aspect that might be the villain here is how the world looks at the different types of harassment and how the law works around it. The third episode takes a severe look at it. When the officer to whom he had gone to report Martha asks him, why did it take you so long to report it? The fact that this question can be asked makes one wonder if their suffering is legitimate anymore because the authority indicates that time changes how their experience has aged. There are lots of villains that Baby Reindeer points toward in the series, and Martha isn't primarily the antagonist here. Marvelous Verdict Baby Reindeer is one of the most essential series in how it brings things to light and makes us aware of various experiences and how the world perceives them. Richard Gadd dares to become utterly vulnerable on the screen, showing his darkest stories with a brilliant performance. 
Even though the original stage version of the series had the stool as a stalker, it has to be quite traumatic to endure the entire episode again for the series. Apart from being dark, the series has its share of comedic moments, with characters capable of keeping the balance. There is an exciting transition from funny to creepy during the interactions between Martha and Donnie. Even though they joke around about things, Martha is convinced that the jokes are actually with its masterful storytelling, Baby Reindeer sheds light on hidden events behind closed doors. This grounded story based on real-life incidents has much to say, and the viewers have much to take away from it. Let's hope that people see things a little differently and change their perspectives about the variety of things they get to the other day. It will bring to light more of the hidden evils in our society. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!